If you want to find out how to be successful in the kingdom of God, this is the way to do it. It's called the eighth wonder of the world. This is a fundamental principle of human growth and development. Discover the law of use. The most important law of human development. And learn how to make it work for you. You'll lose what you don't use. Well, welcome to the 700 Club. The president is putting the issue of illegal immigration back on the table. He, of course, blames Republicans for blocking it in Congress. In fact, Pat, they say that any reform bill has to make sure America's borders are secure. Jennifer Wishon has that story. For the first time since becoming president, Mr. Obama stood along the U.S. border with Mexico. He says it's more secure than ever and argues it's now time to reform the nation's immigration laws. What we really need to do is to keep up the fight to pass genuine, comprehensive reform. That is the ultimate solution to this problem. That's what I'm committed to doing. The president proposes holding businesses that exploit undocumented workers accountable, streamlining the nation's process of legal immigration, and requiring immigrants who enter the U.S. illegally to take responsibility. So they broke the law, and that means they've got to pay their taxes, they've got to pay a fine, they've got to learn English, and they've got to undergo background checks and a, and a lengthy process before they get in line for legalization. That's not too much to ask. The president's strategy is to rally public support, putting more pressure on Congress, where at least among Republicans, there are no plans to tackle immigration. The president will have to present a plan that takes amnesty off the table and focuses instead on making a real commitment to border and internal security. Republicans say they're focused on cutting federal spending. To counter concerns that illegal immigrants are a drain on public resources, President Obama argues reform will help the economy grow by bringing illegal immigrants out from an underground economy, raising wages for the middle class, and spurring innovation among immigrants who attend American colleges. The jobless rate continues to haunt the president. Despite bailouts and stimulus packages, unemployment has hovered around 9 percent for years. Labor Secretary Hilda Solis tells CBN News bringing illegal immigrants out of the shadows will only help the economy grow. When you have someone that's brought in and working under conditions, not being paid their regular wages or overtime or have any of the safety and protections, that obviously disadvantages that other business that is playing by the rules. So we want to get at the root of that cause and eliminate it. President Obama won 67 percent of the Hispanic vote in 2008. They're voters he's working to motivate once again and increasing an influential part of the American electorate that's growing impatient. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News, Washington. Thanks, Jennifer. Without question, we've got to settle the problem of immigration. There are about 12 million so-called illegals in our country. <clears throat> These people work. Uh, many of them, of course, pay taxes. They take care of their families. They're good folks. And um, we need to work out some way where they can be given a path to citizenship. But what uh, uh, the Republicans are saying, if they've broken the law and come in illegally, they shouldn't necessarily be given, quote, amnesty. Well, there's got to be a, a solution to it. But without doubt, the president's playing politics. See, the Hispanics are the fastest growing segment of our uh, population, very influential people, and he wants to get their votes. So that's what this is all about. It's not so much a noble cause, but it is, uh, I'm going to be running again for a reelection, and I need your help. Well, Lee Webb has the rest of our top stories from the CBN Newsroom. Lee? Pat, once again, Democrats are proposing new taxes to help cut the deficit. And once again, Republicans are saying no. Democratic Senator Kent Conrad suggested the idea of a surtax on millionaires. And Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid called for an end to tax subsidies for oil and gas companies. But House Speaker John Boehner's office said that would be the equivalent of a tax increase and it would be felt at the gas pump. Republicans are pushing major spending cuts as part of any deal to raise the government's debt limit. They still seem to be at odds, Pat. Well, isn't it interesting, these leftists, progressives, whatever they're called, have run the country into a huge deficit. 
They have spent money like drunken sailors. And then they're saying to the protective sector of our economy, well, you've got to pay the bill. We're going to send you the bill. We're going to surtax you. Nonsense. It's not going to do the job. It isn't going to. If we want to really raise taxes, we've got to go after the middle class because that's where the money is. And uh, this other is just posturing, and it's ridiculous. It's not going to work. Well, you were shocked as I was. Can you imagine Bull Halsey listening to the fact you got a, two gay sailors getting married on one of his ships? Ooh, he's turning over in his grave, Lee. Well, Pat, the, speaking of that, the Navy is putting the brakes now on a plan to train chaplains to perform gay marriages. The chief of Navy chaplain says his decision has been suspended pending a legal review. The reversal comes after 63 members of the House of Representatives sent a letter to a protest to Navy Secretary Ray Mabus. They say the plan to sanction gay marriages violates the Defense of Marriage Act. That's the federal law defining marriage as between one man and one woman. The lawmakers say we find it unconscionable that the United States Navy, a federal entity sworn to preserve and protect the Constitution of the United States, believes it is their place alone to train and direct service members to violate federal law. The raging Mississippi River has crested in Memphis and left behind flood damage estimated at more than $320 million. Now four million people downstream are bracing for record flood levels. The river is moving at more than twice its normal speed. The flood surge swallowed riverboat casinos and homes in Tunica, Mississippi, and forced some families to ride it out in shelters. Go home, and we're going to do whatever it takes to stay there. The velocity is, uh, is much faster than, than is typical, and also a lot of the landmarks that we're used to seeing are, are not here. Further south in Carter, Mississippi, one family anticipates its 3,500 acres of crops to be wiped out. That's cotton and corn country down there. And in Vidalia, Louisiana, residents have been warned to start working on an evacuation plan. Rivers in the state of Arkansas are among the many that feed the Mississippi. They, too, are overflowing. The floodwaters there have poured into homes and churches. Members of one congregation came back to their flooded church Sunday. And as Mark Martin reports, their faith remains strong. Back to uh, the fire our uh, yard keeper. He watered the grass too much. Pastor Gerald Dean tries to encourage his congregation during this time of uncertainty and loss. The Elnora Freewell Baptist Church in Pocahontas, Arkansas, is meeting in a different building because floodwaters from the Black River, nearly four feet high inside the church, destroyed the interior. The people just, they just couldn't believe it. They just could not believe it that water could get that high uh, in that area, but it, but it did, and so we're, we're making history. Throughout the service, many church members could not hold back the tears. Dean says they did not have flood insurance, and it will be a long time before the church can get back to normal. I said, I don't know, I don't know what we're going to do. I, it's just devastating to our congregation. I mean, they were so proud of that building. But despite the devastation, church members sang out praise to God. In Desark, Arkansas, the White River is the ominous one, reportedly cresting at the highest level in recorded history. Gospel Mission Church there has fed and housed around a thousand people. If it hadn't been for our church, we wouldn't know what to do right now. The Cobb's house is about a half mile from the White River, and they do not have flood insurance. In Desark, even the shelter volunteers are displaced. I can't get to it unless I go by boat. Yet residents here and in Pocahontas refuse to give up hope. The Lord's going to take care of us. We're going to be better than we were before. We believe that. Mark Martin, CBN News. Amen. Americans have an insatiable appetite for diets. People are always looking for the quick and easy, but as Lori Johnson reports, one of the latest diet fads is unusual and could be dangerous. The new HCG diet claims to make you lose a lot of weight fast. So what's not to like about that? Well, for starters, it involves getting a shot every day containing the HCG hormone that's produced in pregnant women. The idea is your body thinks it's pregnant, so you burn fat, not muscle. Dr. Lionel Bissoon charges $1,500 for 30 days worth of injections and says his patients love it. I've seen people lose weight, people who have failed diets, 
people have failed pretty much everything. And we've seen uh, HCG makes a big difference for them. The HCG diet also involves cutting calories to, in some cases, 500 a day. Psychologist Goldal Kaba is one satisfied customer. She's already lost 23 pounds. This is an opportunity to train the body to eat smaller portions, eat healthy foods, and learn what works for you. But in a recent survey of 23 doctors from various subspecialties, none said there is any scientific evidence that the HCD diet is an effective weight loss tool. And add there are risks, including blood clots, pulmonary embolism, depression, and headaches. And the question is the, the permanence or impermanence of the weight loss with this plan when the injections stop. The FDA has not approved HCG hormones for weight loss. Lori Johnson, CBN News. What will they think of next, Pat? Well, I tell you, making somebody like a pregnant woman is about as nutty as anything I've ever heard. Don't do it unless you want to have a baby. And I really don't <laughs> want to have one, to tell you the truth. I think this is crazy. But, you know, they did Fen Fen. That was the latest thing. It was so popular. Everybody was into Fen Fen. Then it turned out that it was making heart lesions and mm -hmm. having all kinds of problems with you. And they, of course, banned it and brought it off the, off the uh, market. But uh, it was a fad, and doctors were prescribing it and putting their patients on this. And you just wonder, well, what are these doctors thinking about? What they need is to get back to good old-fashioned nutrition, eat fresh vegetables, eat fresh fruit, and exercise about an hour a day. And if you do that, like Christy, you lose weight. Well, good. I'm glad you threw me in there. <laughs> I, threw you, I was just waiting to dump you in. <laughs> no, but I will say this. You said it, Pat. It really is basic. Listen, there's so many schemes out there. And there's so many, you know, plans. Of if, you, if you get this shot, eat this food, do this, do that. It's basic. If you eat what God grew, what came out of the ground or came off of a tree and run to it and run back home, you'll be fine. Run, run is an run, exercise. Run, yeah, run. Yeah. <laughs> And if you don't have a field to run to, you run around your house. But, exactly. But it, exactly. It's, it's true. You know, thin people, you put a pedometer on them, and they, they do so many more steps. They're on the go all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, more sedentary people burn less calories. It's just real simple. Yeah. But, oh, my, we got another one, too. And I disagree with the experts on this one, Lee. Pat, the latest debate over childhood obesity involves a possible ban on chocolate milk in schools. Flavored milks can contain high amounts of sugar, some as much as an 8-ounce can of soda. But many nutritionists warn against such bans. Even flavored milk contains nine essential nutrients like calcium and vitamin D. The superintendent of Los Angeles Unified, the second largest school district in the U.S., is pushing the ban, but other school systems have backed off the idea. So, Pat, you, you don't think a, a ban is called for no here? No way. I want those children getting their calcium and their vitamin D and their milk protein. It's good for them. And the idea, if a little bit of chocolate makes them happy, good for them. I'm a fan of chocolate. I'm not a fan of chocolate candy as such. I'm not a fan of milk chocolate. But I am a fan of dark chocolate, a little bit of it. It opens your arteries and it's good for your heart, a little. Well, I'm an equal opportunist chocolate connoisseur. <laughs> I believe in white chocolate, dark no, chocolate, no, milk chocolate, no, chocolate milk, chocolate no, pie, chocolate no. cake. Brother, if you were chocolate, I'd like you too. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've got white jeans just the way it is. All right. So much for that little contretemps. <laughs> What's next? <laughs> Coming up, <clears throat> a look at the farm of the future. If you take a greenhouse and you stack one greenhouse on top of the other, you have a vertical growing system. Go five story, 10 story, even 20 stories high. We can grow 10 times what we can grow right now per acre. So could this be the answer to feeding the world? Well, find out after this. Here we go. Get ready, because now the more fun you have, the more fit you can get. Introducing the Curved Circuit with Zumba Fitness. It's the only class that mixes the music and moves of Zumba with the proven strength training of Curves for one wildly effective 30-minute workout. Dance on in for a free week. Burn up to 500 calories in 30 minutes and shimmy as you sculpt. 
Call now to reserve your place in a class that will fill up fast. The Curved Circuit with Zumba Fitness. It's the wildly effective workout that's only at Curves. Tomorrow. We're waiting. Go, go, go. Meet the Duggar family. I have to go to all the bathrooms and get the laundry. All 21 of them. They never dreamed in a million years that all this would happen. Go behind the scenes with the stars of 19 Kids and Counting. It's been a lot of hard work, but much joy, much, much joy. Tomorrow on The 700 Club. 19 kids and counting. Boy, oh boy. Well, scientists predict that the Earth's population could be as high as 9 billion, 9 billion within 30 years. So how will the world produce enough food to feed everyone? Well, our Chuck Holton went out and looked at some amazing possibilities. It's the bane of civilized society in the 21st century, urban sprawl. Millions of people around the world move into cities each year looking for work, and a better way of life. What they often find is pollution, traffic, and a high cost of living. A hundred years ago, around half of all Americans lived on farms. Today, that number has dwindled to less than 2%, with almost all food production taking place on super-efficient industrial farms. Add to this the growing population worldwide and the potential shortage of land for growing the food these people will require. Pollution and climate change only make the problem worse, as farmers struggle with declining harvests on existing farms. To address these challenges, researchers at the University of Arizona in Tucson are experimenting with futuristic alternatives to traditional agriculture. With the uh, concerns of increasing uh, world population, uh, reduction in the uh, uh, farmlands, food security issues, food safety issues. I think there's a huge demand for systems such as controlled environment agriculture to produce good quality, safer produce with less use of energy, water and labor. What we are doing here in the Controlled Environment Agriculture Center, we are focusing on uh, resource savings on the systems. We are trying to save energy, save water uh, and fertilizer to produce uh, uh, high yields. These new theories are already gaining traction in Latin America. It's springtime here in Panama and it's the season for harvesting watermelons. These ones are probably headed off to America or even Europe. And you know they've been harvesting them this way for maybe a hundred years, but that may be about to change if one man has his way. It's very simple, we have to do something because the way traditional farming is, we're not gonna be able to feed the world population over the next 30 to 50 years. David Perenza has been growing and exporting produce for more than a decade. Panama's climate, canal, and business-friendly government has allowed it to become a crossroads for international shipping. But there are problems here as well. Climate change is constantly. We find in our fields more and more of this problem of mildew, and it's created due to the weather, to rain. Growing in a climate-controlled environment solves many problems being faced by farmers around the world. But the shortage of arable land is also becoming an issue. Extreme weather conditions such as cold snaps and droughts can also cause shortages and higher food prices. Perenza hopes to tackle these agriculture problems in the future. One potential solution, the world's first vertical urban farm. Everybody knows what a greenhouse is. Mm -hmm. And around the world, they have environment-controlled greenhouses where they control everything. And they produce a much better quality food with less chemicals and some even organic. Now, if you take a greenhouse and you stack one greenhouse on top of the other, you have a vertical growing system. Obviously, what we want to do is we want to put it in a building, go five story, 10 story, even 20 stories high. We can grow 10 times what we can grow right now per acre. We can maximize the yield in the space as well as produce a healthier, more nutritious food for the customers. The plan is to use high-tech methods to build these urban vertical farms around the world. If that sounds expensive, consider the cost savings of growing locally. A lot of the fruits and vegetables that you buy in the United States come from Latin America. And there's a substantial cost in the transportation. With a vertical farm, right there in the city, there is no transportation cost. So you have a lot of savings right there alone. Perenza hopes that his vertical farming concept will be the first of many to crop up in urban areas like this one around the globe. And if that happens, the farmer of the future may very well go to work in a high-rise like that one. Urban vertical farms are gonna be built around the world. 
It's going to happen. Somebody's going to do it. So we figure it might as well be us. Chuck Holton, CBN News, Panama City, Panama. That is far out. It's far out, but it's cool. Yeah, it is. I'm See? digging it. I think it's a great idea. Well, you know, in those science fiction things, they always had some domed city that it was under a dome, and then they have all these interesting things mm -hmm. going on. But you know, the, the Japanese did the hydroponic uh, farming forever, and they had all kinds of uh, delicious vegetables going on, very small plots of mm -hmm. land. The Israelis have pioneered what's called drip agriculture. It's been very successful. They, mm. <clears throat> they allow just a little bit of water drip. They, they don't just flood these fields, a little mm. bit of water drip. And it keeps the plants moist without uh, depleting the water supply. So everybody's trying, and yeah. our hats are off to them. Absolutely interesting. Well, tomorrow uh, you're going to meet America's most influential farmer. He's the man who started a food revolution right in his own backyard. See Joel Gallatin on tomorrow's 700 Club. Christy. But today, Pat, um, we have actually a story about a man who was enslaved by addiction for 18 years. It was almost like an obsession. I tried to patch. I tried cold turkey. And a lot of times when I would try to, I'd get the shakes. I'd break out in sweats. So watch how he finally kicked his habit overnight with no withdrawals. We're going to tell you about his story when we come back. What makes the miracles of Jesus even more miraculous? Standing where they happened, in Israel. Come visit Capernaum, where Jesus restored a paralytic's helpless legs. Sail the Sea of Galilee, where Jesus walked on the water. Stroll through the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus healed a servant's ear. To learn more about standing where it all happened, in Israel, visit www.goisrael.com. Come visit Israel. Do you take fish oil? There's an omega-3 supplement that's better than regular fish oil. Staying healthy, it's not easy. I exercise regularly and eat lots of fruits and vegetables. I used to take a fish oil supplement too, but then I discovered something better than regular fish oil. Arctic Wonder Omega-3 Krill Oil. It's from the makers of One A Day, so I know I can trust it. The omega-3s in Arctic Wonder both support heart health and are scientifically proven to be better absorbed than regular fish oil. You'd have to take six of these fish oil soft gels to get the strength of just two Arctic Wonder soft gels. The Arctic Wonder does not have an aftertaste. They go down real easy. Arctic Wonder isn't just good for your heart. It also supports healthy brain function and a healthy immune system. This is one of the products that I plan to take for the rest of my life. Arctic Wonder is from One A Day and not available in stores. For a special trial offer, call or go online now. Call 1-800-409-7339. That's 1-800-409-7339. Or go online to tryarcticwonder.com now. To see this week's top on-demand videos, go to cbn.com. Did you know that, that 12 to 14 million Americans use snuff? Well, Randy Geisler was actually 23 years old when he had his first pinch. And for the next 18 years, he carried a huge monkey on his back. Take a look. For 18 years, I was chewing snuff every day. I had to have it. It was almost like an obsession. I tried to patch. I tried cold turkey. I tried weaning it so many times over the years. And a lot of times when I would try to, I'd get the shakes, I'd break out in sweats. It was almost like a drug. That drive to go for the, for the tobacco was, was just so intense all the time. But it wasn't until I was watching the 700 Club, and Pat comes on and he says, I want to pray for those who want to be delivered from addiction. Some are enslaved to nicotine. I thought, well, Lord, I'm going to pray and seek you to help me. And Pat prayed, and I prayed with him. Once he was done, I turned the TV off, laid down, and I went to sleep. The very next morning, I kind of had a, a lack of a taste for it, if, if that's a, a proper way of saying it. So I just stuck it in my pocket, and I walked out and headed down to the shop. That whole day, I had no desire to chew it, none. And I realized, I'm not doing this on my own because I've never had any willpower or ability to do it myself before. I said, something's going on here. I had no shakes, no headaches, no stress of any kind. One breaking out in sweats and snapping at people, one jittery and shaking. 
it was like it was totally gone. And to this day, I have not touched the stuff. I was like, thank you, Lord. It's all you. I give you all the glory, give you all the honor for what you've done because it had nothing to do with me. When you allow God to intervene in your life, to take over, it is so much easier. <laughs> You know, I love the fact that God delights himself in the desires yeah. of our hearts. And that means even in our, our prayers, that God delights ourselves when we pray, we rely on him because he wants to do a miracle. My wife, as you probably have heard, is a registered nurse. Mm -hmm. She used to she was a professor of nursing. We first came down here. She was working as a nurse in a local hospital. And there was an elderly woman uh, in the hospital who was dipping snuff. And uh, my wife was there, and this lady didn't want to, let her know that she was dipping snuff. Mm -hmm. And so when my wife came into her room, she had to swallow all the stuff. Oh. <laughs> they began to wonder, why is this woman getting so sick? Oh, exactly, throwing <laughs> you know? up a storm. But she didn't want Mrs. Robertson to see her Ugh. dipping snuff. It's a filthy habit. But it in is any a event. filthy habit. But listen, we want to encourage you, all just right. like Randy, who was uh, healed. You can be healed, too. In fact, Amen. there's Tell another us. Randy. It must be the name. Right. Randy from North Carolina. He was unable to walk because there was swelling and pain in his left toe and foot. January 31st, he saw an orthopedic surgeon, was diagnosed with a sprained ankle and a swollen toe. The doctor said it should take about six months to heal. March 29th, terrible pain. He was unable to walk. He was watching the 700 Club. He said, he as in Pat said, someone has a big toe that has swelled up. You mashed it somehow and it's swollen and it hurts like crazy. Right now, the swelling's going down, the pain is leaving, and you are going to be absolutely whole. There's a dramatic miracle in Jesus' name. Guess what? That's exactly what happened. Immediately, Randy's toe became cold and it became hot. Later in the day, there was no pain. How did he know? Because he walked about a mile or a fourth of a mile without the pain, and he is back to work on his farm. How cool is that? Uh, it's pretty cool. Well, Barbara in Kenner, Louisiana, had been suffering with pain down the right side of her body. It was diagnosed with degenerative <coughs> disc disease and compressed vertebra. Her doctor prescribed shots for the pain and inflammation, but she continued to suffer from throbbing headaches and pain radiating all the way down from her ear. Then one day she heard you, Christy, Amen. you <laughs> say, quote, someone is having a throbbing uh, headache behind your ear that that uh, keeps your equilibrium off. Put your hand behind your ear because God is healing it. Instantly, the throbbing stopped and the healing manifested all over her right side. Her ear, eyeball, shoulder, sinuses, head, and equilibrium were all healed. Amen. God's good, isn't he? That's awesome. All right, folks, now's the time. Mm -hmm. Now is the time for you now is the day of salvation. Now, we're going to pray for you, and we're going to believe God for you. The Bible says if two of you would agree on earth as touching anything that they'll ask, it'll be done for them by my Father, which is in heaven. Now, Christy and I are going to join hands for you, and we're going to believe for you. Now, will you pray with us now, wherever you are, whatever the, the, the deal is, whatever's going on, whether it's an addiction, whether it is a sickness, whether it is a chronic illness, whether it is arthritis, or whether it is uh, joint disease, or whether it's diabetes, whatever it is, mm -hmm. God can and will heal it. Now, Amen. we're going to pray. Join with us right now. You, Father. Father, in Jesus' name, we agree together. And in the name of Jesus, let the power of God come down now and touch people's lives. Oh my, somebody is throwing up. You just from the down and deep in your, your inside, you've just been vomiting and throwing. You say, oh, you cried at God, will you ever stop this? Well, the answer is he stopped it right now and you are completely healed. Uh, Christy? There's a young person who has a premature case of um, arthritis in your hand and, and, you, and it's scaring you right now. Place your other hand on that hand and you're going to feel a warmth and the Holy Spirit, Spirit you, is Jesus. healing that Thank you, right now. What you could not do before, you do it now. Thank you, Lord. Uh, there's a swollen tongue. You've got a swollen tongue, and you've got all kinds of like sores on it, and it's just terribly painful. Right now, just put your hand on your mouth, and in the name of Jesus, that tongue is going down. Those lesions are healed in Jesus' name. Your tongue and your mouth will be totally whole. 
Christy. The Lord is healing an eye infection right now in the name of Jesus. Also someone uh, ringing in their ears, the Lord is healing that in the name of Jesus. Someone else has, um, it's a scalp issue where, uh, I can't describe it, there's just a scalp issue. You put your hand on your scalp in the name of Jesus and whatever that issue is, the Lord is healing you. Thank you, Father. There's a family, you've got five children and and you're contemplating a divorce. You said, I just Mm -hmm. can't live this way any longer. Well, God is going to make a way and he's going to bring harmony where there's this unity. Those children need you. In the name of Jesus, there is peace coming into your life. Now we speak the word Mm -hmm. that the power of God will be present in your life, that you might know healing, that you might know deliverance, that you might have the the ability financial you need. In Jesus' name, receive an answer. Amen. Amen. And amen. Wow. Go to your phones. Tell us what God's done. We'd love to hear from you. Mm-hmm. And uh, it'll, it'll bless you as you give testimony, you know. Uh, Jesus healed a bunch of lepers, and only one of them came back. And he said, well, there are ten of them were healed. Where are the nine? Only one came back to thank him. So call and tell us what God's done in your life. And keep on praying. If you need further prayer, it's 1-800-759-0700. Now we've got something special for you. We do. More specialness. Well, still ahead, it's called the eighth wonder of the world. Well, find out what it is and how it can actually work for you. How are you going to do this? Well, you're going to find out when Pat talks about the secret kingdom. That's later on in today's 700 Club. Brenda, you got to see the video I saw in the 700 Club. I pray God will do the same awesome work in your life. Go to CBN.com to I Saw It on the 700 Club for a fast, easy way to see and share your favorite videos. My name is Roger Stump, and I'm a cancer survivor. The surgeon said it's inoperable. It's already in your liver. My wife, Brenda, sat there and cried, and I'm thinking, I can't die right now. I'm only 52 years old. I was so distraught. I've heard Cancer Treatment Centers of America had experience with pancreatic cancers. It was like night and day. The hospital just breeds an environment of hope. You'd get a CT scan, and the next morning, the results were read to you. We'd go up there. I just knew it was going to be a good result. You could just see the joy on Dr. Granick's face. Call now, and we'll show you how the most compassionate people anywhere put you at the center of everything we do. Together, we'll explore real treatment options you may not even know exist. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is such a different place because they give you hope. I would strongly urge you to call them and and get a second opinion. Please call today. Welcome back to the 700 Club. A majority of Egyptians want a civil society based on the Quran in their country. According to a new Pew Research poll, two-thirds say they want society to strictly follow the Islamic holy book. But only 30 percent have a favorable view of Islamic fundamentalism. The Pew results are based on face-to-face interviews with thousands of Egyptians. It is the first credible poll of Egyptians since the overthrow of President Hosni Mubarak. A Muslim man in Oklahoma wants to block that state's constitutional amendment that bans the use of Islamic holy law. The amendment prohibits state courts from considering international or Islamic law when deciding cases. Munir Awad claims the ban violates the religious rights of Muslims. State attorneys say that Awad has not shown how the proposed amendment negatively affects his Muslim faith. You can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Pat and Christy will be back with more of the 700 Club after this. Have you ever heard the expression, good as gold? Well, gold is on everybody's minds these days, and rightfully so, having risen in value dramatically since 2001. For years now, I've been singing the praises of one of the most recognized and trusted names in gold, Swiss America. They believe, like I do, that people need to know what's good about gold. Gold has withstood the test of time, and so has Swiss America. Now's the time to rediscover gold, because gold offers diversification, profit potential, and best of all, privacy. Call or visit online now and ask for the Pat Boone DVD, and they'll gladly rush out a copy, along with other information about getting gold into your nest egg. If you're going to buy gold, buy it from a company you can trust. I did. 
and I've been a satisfied Swiss America customer for over 15 years. They are as good as gold. Call or log on right now. In the next 60 seconds, we want you to qualify to be the next $50,000 home makeover winner. Pick up the phone and get ready to start dialing when the number appears on your screen. Call the number on your screen now and we'll mail you a key. If your key opens the lock in your local direct buy club, you'll be the next $50,000 home makeover winner. Operators are standing by, so call right now. Direct Buy Club has already awarded over a million dollars, and someone is going to win the $50,000 home makeover. Why not you? If the phone number is blinking, the phone lines are open. Call now to receive your key and an invitation to your local Direct Buy Club, where members can save thousands or more paying low direct from the source prices on big ticket items, like kitchen cabinets, home furnishings, flooring, bathroom fixtures, and so much more. Call now and get your key to winning a $50,000 home makeover. Someone is going to win the $50,000 home makeover. Why not you? Tomorrow. We're waiting. Go, go, go. Meet the Duggar family. I have to go to all the bathrooms and get the laundry. All 21 of them. They never dreamed in a million years that all this would happen. Go behind the scenes with the stars of 19 Kids and Counting. It's been a lot of hard work, but much joy, much, much joy. Tomorrow on The 700 Club. On monsoon rains flooded Pakistan, more than 1,500 people were killed, whole villages were destroyed, and crops washed away. Survivors were left starving until Operation Blessing arrived on the scene. Two and a half million people living in Pakistan were left homeless after the floods. Most still live in tent cities. Many families barely have enough food to survive. And with reports of deadly Taliban attacks against foreign aid workers, it's difficult to get to the hardest hit areas. But Operation Blessing partnered with Shelter Now International to bring in enough food for 2,000 people. As we entered each refugee camp, crowds of hungry men, women, and children surrounded our truck to receive bags of rice. One was an 85-year-old woman who told us she had never seen such a disaster in her life. Before we arrived with food, she was afraid that she would die in her tent. At the end of our trip, we prepared a special cooked meal in one of the villages. It helped them understand that during their time of suffering, there are many people who care. That simple gesture brought hope into thousands of people's lives. Doesn't matter what the politics are, what matters is the fact that human beings are there and they suffer, and all over the world they're suffering. The wars, revolutions, and natural disasters causing tremendous suffering. And we're there with Operation Blessing to help them. And if you want to participate with us in helping the poor and the needy and the suffering around the world, it's real simple. You pick up the phone, you call 1-800-759-0700, or you can log on to CBN.com and so you can count on me. We want you to be a part of this important ministry, so please call. Christy, what's next? Up next, we have some amazing teaching, Pat. Check this out. It's the most important law of human growth and development. But do you know what it is? And do you have it working for you? Well, if not, you're about to find out from Pat in this segment of The Secret Kingdom. The kingdom of God, what's it like? Well, it's something I'd like to submit to you. It's sort of upside down. It isn't like what we assume here in the world. You know, the greatest virtue in the secret kingdom is a reverse of the greatest sin. The greatest sin was pride. And pride really has no place in the kingdom of God. But the reverse of that is humility. And the Lord himself, when he came to earth, the Bible says he humbled himself and he took on the form of a servant. He came to serve. Now, he is king. He is king of the kingdom, Jesus. And yet, 
when he came to earth and when he lived among us, he lived as a servant. As a matter of fact, in what was called the Last Supper, you remember he laid aside his cloak and he took a towel and he wrapped it around himself in a basin of water and began to wash the feet of his disciples. That was the work of a slave. And he says, now you see what I'm doing? He said, I'm your Lord, but I am among you as one who serves. And he says, this is the way you should do for your fellows. I am a servant. And as a result, he gave us the key to the kingdom. The kingdom is one of humility and service, not of self-seeking and pride and trying to get the best of other people. But the kingdom is one of service because our king has said, here's the way to do it. I'm washing feet. You wash feet. I'm taking role of servant. You take role of servant. And you know, the amazing thing about it is, though, in the kingdom of God, the best leader is the one who is the servant, which is precisely what Jesus said. It's kind of upside down. He said, the kings of this earth lord it over people. And these people, they call them benefactors, but he said, it's not supposed to be that way with you. He said, he is great among you, shall be servant. And he that is the greatest shall be the bond slave or the servant of all. Now, that doesn't make any sense, does it? It's upside down. Uh, you want to be a big shot and you want to be lifted up. And the Lord said, no, that's not it. You want to be great in my kingdom, you get down and I'll lift you up. And you know, in business and in the military and in various other activities of human beings, it's discovered that the servant leaders are the ones who are the most successful. The greatest general is the general who serves his troops. The greatest business person is the one who serves his customers. He is fanatic about serving his customers. I know Walmart came from a little dry goods store in Bentonville, Arkansas, and has become the biggest corporation, I believe, of its nature in the whole world. And the guiding principle is a fanatic observance to service. They do everything they can to cut prices, to make sure that they can serve their customers with the lowest possible prices that they can get. And they're always, always, always attacking their cost structure so that they can have lower prices to serve the general public who come to shop in their stores. And as a result, they have been enormously successful because they follow the principle of the kingdom. But you see, it seems to be upside down. You say, oh no, you want me to be a leader? Well, I've got to be sitting up on a horse and, uh, or in some exalted position and have people saying, yes, sir, no, sir, and bowing and scraping before me. That's not it. You're gonna follow Jesus. You'll be like one who serves. And if you are like him, and the greatest of all, the greatest is the one who serves the most people. So you look at somebody like, Thomas Edison, or you look at somebody like Henry Ford, or, or I mentioned Walmart or whatever, the greatest ones are the ones that serve the most. So if you want to be a great servant, reach out to serve many. If you want to find out how to be successful in the kingdom of God, this is a way to do it. Now, as I said earlier, there are several principles that I call the laws of the kingdom. And I want to talk about what's probably the most important, most important law of human growth and development. And I call it the law of use. The law of use. How does that work, this law of use? There was a story that Jesus told about a nobleman who called his servants to him and gave them certain sums of money 
And then he went into a far country, and he said, you occupy with these till I come back. The first one, he gave 10 talents. To another one, he gave five talents. To another one, one talent. Now he says, I'm going away, and I'm going to come back, and you occupy with what I've given you till I get back. So he left and left these people to their own devices. The one who got 10 talents took his master's money, and he began to trade with it. He bought goods, took them on a caravan ride to the next country, sold them at a profit, bought additional goods, brought them back, sold them at a profit, traded back and forth until such time as he had doubled his Lord's money. So now, instead of 10 talents, he's got 20 talents. The one who had five talents did the same thing. He exercised what had been given him. He used the money and he made deals. He invested in the stock market. He bought merchandise. He perhaps bought a small business. He, he did all these things. And when he finished the work he was doing, he doubled his Lord's money. Now, the five had become 10. The next one took the one talent that was given him, and he said, my master is a tough guy. He is about as hard-nosed a businessman as I'm aware of. He said, he gathers where he didn't straw, and he reaps where he didn't sow. And I don't want to run afoul of his uh, nasty cruelty. And so what I'm going to do is dig a hole in the ground and put that money in the hole, cover it up, and then every so often I'm going to come back and look at it, make sure it's still there. And when he comes back, I'll give him his own, like I got it. I haven't lost anything. So the Lord came back. He had received the kingdom that he'd gone to get. He called the servants to him. He said, okay, I'm interested in what you do with my money. What did you do with the trading that I gave you? So the one with the 10 talents, he, he uh, came and he said, well, I've doubled your money. And the Lord said, well done, good and faithful servant. I'm going to put you in charge of 20 cities. You are in charge of something. You've shown that you're responsible and you use my possessions well. The one with five talents came and he, the Lord said to him, what did you do? And he said, well, I, I traded with your money. I, I took risks. I had caravans go over the desert. They bought goods. They sold goods. And over a period of time, I have doubled your money. So you now have 10 talents. And the Lord said, well done, good and faithful servant. I'm now going to put you in charge of 10 cities. The last one that came to him, and he says, all right, tell me what you did. And he said, I knew you were a hard man. He said, I knew that you gathered where you didn't straw and that you reaped where you didn't sow. And I was afraid I was afraid. And so he said, I took your money and I dug a hole in the ground and I put it in it and I'm now taking it out and I haven't lost anything. You know what the Lord said about him? It's an amazing because it's in the Bible, <laughs> by the way. He said, you wicked and slothful servant. Wicked and slothful. Wicked. Wicked because he didn't invest his Lord's money. He was wicked because he didn't use what had been given to him. And he said, take that away from him and give it to the man that had the 10 talents. And there was a gasp in the audience. They said, my goodness, he, he, this other guy's got 10 and he doesn't have anything. You're taking it away from him. And then the Lord gave this principle. He says, unto him who has more will be given. And he that has not, even what he thinks he's got, will be taken away from him. Now, I was looking at that and contemplating the full significance. And I 
was introduced to what is called the exponential curve, which is a mathematical phenomenon that is simply inexorable. It works in our world. And how does it work? Well, it's the law of compound interest. Baron Rothschild called compound interest the eighth wonder of the world. Why? Well, because if you take a given amount of money and you compound the interest, in other words, each year you get the interest and you add it to the principal, and then you take that again and compound it and compound it, over the years, you will have an enormous amount of money. If you take $100, and let's assume that you double it. That's 100%, and that not everybody's going to get that very rarely. But let's assume that you, you do enough business that you can double $100. So next year, you have 200 The next year, you have 400 The next year, you have 800 The next year, 16 The next 36 Next, 72 then 14,000 and 28,000 and so forth. At the end of 20 years, what do you think you'll have? $100, double it every year for 20 years. You will have $50 million in just 20 years. So if you're 30, by the time you're 50, you'll have $50 million. If you can double $100 every year. If you double it some more, at the end of about 25 years, you'll have $1.6 billion. And if you double it for 50 years, you'll have about $12.8 quadrillion. So you'll have more money than there's in the whole world. $100, law of use, you occupy. Now, this is a fundamental principle of human growth and development. But just take, for example, your arm Assume that you lift your arm, have a, a weight on your arm, and day by day or week by week, you add a little bit of weight. Say you're doing five pounds, and then you go to seven pounds, and then you go to 10 pounds, and then little by little. And before long, believe it or not, you'll have arms like Arnold Schwarzenegger, big, strong, and the ladies say, I don't want arms like arms. <laughs> well, you'll have beautifully shaped arms, whatever. But on the other hand, you take your arm and you bind it against your chest and you don't use it for, say, eight months. You don't lift anything. When you get through, you won't have the strength to lift a teacup. You will have lost what you have. And that's exactly what Jesus said, unto him who has more will be given. And he that has not even what he thinks he's got will be taken away from him. You lose what you don't use. It is the law of use. It is the fundamental law of human growth and development. If you use what's there, if you have musical talent, you use it and train it, you'll get more. If you have intellectual prowess and you use it and train it and explore more and add and you get compounded and you move into new realms, new realms, new realms. It will grow enormously. But if you don't use your mind, if you don't use your talents, if you're a singer and you don't sing, you know, you lose it. You'll lose your voice. You'll lose your ability. It's true in every aspect of life. The more you exercise something, the more opportunity you have to get into a new level because you move up and then you move out more and then you get out more and more until you can accomplish amazing things. The law of use, the fundamental law. And this is a law of the kingdom because Jesus Christ said unto him who has, more will be given. And he that has not even what he thinks he's got will be taken away from him. Amen. Well, those are some good nuggets of truth. We're learning about humility, being a servant, and the law of use. And I'm sitting here thinking, what kind of talents do I have? And I'm not sure, so I'll have to figure that one out because I don't want to lose them. I want to use them. I got to figure out what I have first. You don't sing, do you? <laughs> I 
sing, but you, okay, we'll just, in the weeks to come, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be bringing you more segments from The Secret Kingdom. So if you'd like to watch the segment that we just saw again, or if you'd like to share it with a friend, all you have to do is just log on to CBN.com. And I tell you what, not only will you be blessed, but many others will be blessed. That share button on, on CBN.com is a really cool thing. So We, uh, I, I learned principles. I prayed for about five years mm -hmm. that the Lord would show me some secrets, and this is it. And yeah. I wrote a book, and it's, it transforms lives, and it transformed my life, my, my understanding of how things work, and it's just so profound. Yeah. You know? I think the thing that's so cool about the Lord is that He's a mystery, but He's not. So it seems like they're secrets, but they're not, because He's like, here it is for you. Do you know what I'm saying? Does well, that make sense? It's there all along, but not many people have found it, yeah. so it's hidden. Well, speaking of hidden, all right. We have stuff that's not hidden right now. Those are some of the questions that we want to bring to you real Please, quick. We only have a couple it. minutes, so All we're right. going to have some fun with some viewer questions. All right. The very first one starts out with a viewer who says, in these uncertain economic times, it's tempting to hide your money, uh, money under the mattress. What suggestions do you have for investments? Well, that's timely. Well, as I've said over and over again, the population is growing. The amount of money is expanding dramatically. The value of the dollar is going down year after year after year. And so you can't get any interest on your money if you put it in a bank. It's like that guy that buried his talent in the ground. So I'm, I'm recommending, and I have, that, that the investment be in natural resources. And I just really believe gold and silver, they, sure, they go up and down, they fluctuate. But uh, over the long haul, uh, gold has gone from thirty or forty dollars an ounce up to fifteen hundred. So it, it's it's it will be the place, in my opinion, to to go with natural resources. Next question. Okay, let's hop on to the next one. It starts with: Is there a special way that God talks to people? Sure, He does. Uh, main thing out of His Word. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a sure word of prophecy. He will also send angels. Mm -hmm. He will speak to us through dreams and visions. And uh, uh, he will speak by his voice. You'll hear a voice in your ear when you turn to the right or the left saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Mm -hmm. So God will also speak to us through the advice of, of, of godly friends. Mm -hmm. There are many ways he'll, 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 he'll order circumstances to lead us. He'll speak to us through numbers. There, there are a lot of ways that God will speak as to what's going on. So you just have to have your ear attuned to listen to what he has to say. Is it not? That's true. Okay, right. really quick. Last one. Dee Dee writes in and says, if our sins are forgiven and God says that they're forgotten, do we still have to stand before God at the judgment seat? Uh, if you read uh, John, I think it's 5, 4, um, he says, uh, he that... Uh, uh, well, has faith in me, believes that God has sent me, um, shall not come into judgment, but is passed from death into life. Um, if we trust in Jesus and we have received him and we believe God sent Jesus Christ, then he says, you are going to be passed from death into life. That's what's going to happen when you accept the Lord. So no, you're not going to have to account for your sins anymore, but I think there are going to be some rewards. Paul said we stand before the, the beam of the judgment seat of Christ. Whew. Well, it's all the time we've got for those. Tomorrow, we take you behind the scenes with the stars of 19 kids and counting, and today we leave you with these words from Nahum. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Here at CBN, we see amazing things happen when we stand together. That's why we want to say thank you to the thousands of you who recently pledged to join the 700 Club. Your monthly gift makes it possible to bring crucial help to those who need it most. You help heal the sick, feed the hungry, and preach the gospel across America and throughout the world. You've brought health and hope to people in desperate need. And changed their lives forever. Just like you did for Samuel, who developed a skin rash that spread into ulcers all over his little body. The nearest clinic, a two-hour bus ride away, couldn't help Samuel. That's when you sent a medical team to his village. He received the medicines and care he needed to save his life. You were the answer to this family's prayers. So please, watch for this mailing and send in your pledge. This year, millions will know the love and saving power of Jesus Christ. And that only happens because you were there.